Welcome to another week of DIYs. It's me, Madison, and we are here with another fun video. Um, this DIY is going to be a little bit more minimalistic, but a very beautiful one. So I hope you guys are excited. Um, so first, what we're going to do is um, I'll show you the flowers. So one, I'd like to say thank you to last week's guest, um, Thalia. She's one of my best friends and Mother's Day was super busy, so I didn't have time to make the DIY video. So I let Thalia take a hold of it and she did a great job. So thank you, Thalia, I appreciate that. All right, so let's get into this week's DIY. Um, so first we have a large spur. Um, I love large spur. It's in the same family as Delphinium, I believe. So people call this Delphinium, some people call um, Delphinium large spur. They're very similar, but they're not the same. Um, so this is Larkspur. We have some beautiful fluffy Monte Cassino. And then we have some um, Lysianthus. This purple Lysianthus is very pretty. And then we have some double layered white tulips. And then for our greenery, we are gonna have um, bay leaf. So yes, this is the bay leaf that you're used to. It smells like the bay leaf that I used to. Don't recommend eating what we send you. Who knows where this is grown, but it's still great to use in floristry. All right, so let's get started. Um, this week I'm using my handy dandy floral knife. Um, I barely ever use floral knives in floristry, um, but I think I'm gonna use one today because why not? So first we're gonna start with our bay leaf. Um, what's really cool about bay leaf is that bay leaf has a great scent to it. Um, you'll see when you start cutting into this, it's gonna like fill the room. Like it's so nice. It smells so good. It has like a very full body scent. It's very strong, low key. Um, almost smells like licorice in a way. Um, I really love it. Some people don't, some people do. I hope you like it because it will be in your house. Um, but I love it, so excited to get this to you. I'm just going in with the bay leaf, taking those pieces off with my floral knife. This video is making me realize how dull my floral knife is because this should not be that hard to crack through some bay leaf, but it's okay. And I'm just making sure that one in my beautiful crystal round base, that everything is kind of hidden and full and beautiful, but then also it has some movement to it. So I'm creating kind of like a swoopy shape with my bay leaf. Because the thing about bay leaf, even though they just look like one big old branch, um, it has a lot of movement to it. So it's one of my favorite greens to use. Um, well, sometimes with bay leaves, some of the top leaves can come bitten off and chewed. Wow. So make sure you peel any of those off because you know, just like we think bay leaf is delicious, there are some critters out there that do as well. So make sure you peel off any brown or munched on leaves. Next, I'm going to go in with my Monty. Um, I tend to break my Monty skin off. Um, I know that's a big no no for forestry, but it's just really easy to just break some of those off. Anyways, I'm just going to stick those in towards the bottom. Um, I kind of want the Monty to see them look a little fancy today, so I'm just filling in my base with it. I'm not going to do too much with it. Down to a really bad habit with snapping on stems. I was doing this like just for fun installation for Flower Day that just passed here in Detroit, and um, I had a class to teach in 40 minutes, and I had to do the installation all by myself. So I was speeding, and then I caught myself as I was doing the installation. I was just snapping the stem. And I'm like, Madison, floor smells good. You always wanna cut with a sharp blade, which I'm not doing, or cut with sharp pruners because if you don't, you're crushing with the stems and then that's gonna adhere it from sucking up water. So you wanna make sure the stems have like a clean cut and they're not crushed. So, a little tip for you. All right, next, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna go on with this beautiful Larkspur. Again, this DIY is very minimalistic. So I hope you guys like it. Um, I love minimalistic looks. Um, I bet you guys can tell because a lot of my stuff is minimalistic, I feel like. Um, but I love me a minimalistic DIY. 
Don't waste any of these, by the way. These little pieces that are on the sides of your um, larkspur, don't save them. I always save mine. They make the cutest little bits on the side. I usually just break them off and then stick them in. They make the cutest little accent pieces and then you can build like gestures and length with them. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Like, isn't this just so beautiful? I love it. I'm gonna keep these tall too, because I kind of want them to be tall and beautiful. And this one can go over here towards the back. And then this one I'm gonna cut short and put it kind of on the front because it kind of has like a hangy gesture to it. So let's see what I said. Put that right there in the front. Bam! It's like emerald. Chef, y'all know Emerald? I feel like I've mentioned Emerald in these videos before. We got one more large spur. And this one is very cute. Um, let's look at the front of our bowl. Hmm. I think actually I'm gonna make this one shorter and put it more towards the front. If you're interested in floral knives, I highly recommend getting them. I recommend getting the Swiss knives. I love those. Um, they're just fun to work with. Like you feel like a real professional when you use a full knife because instead it's like it's a clean sliding motion. Like you just slide and you pull, you kind of pull the stem away from you. There's not a lot of work in the knife unless your knife is dull, which mine kind of is. But you can just pull the stem away from you and it slices it clean. You still get that clean look. And you just feel cool. Like you feel like a cooler forest with a full knife. So highly recommend it. All right, so with our double layered white tulips, since we have double layers, I'm going to only unfold like one layer of the tulip because I just think that looks cool when it's like a bunch of them in there. And I'm gonna stick them in and do some fun stuff with them. I'm not gonna hold back with my double layer tulips. I love my rolls. I think it can add like a different style to your to forestry, you know, like less is sometimes more. Um, and I think minimalist looks really cool bring that into life. Now for our last tulip, I'm just gonna one peel off all those extra stems on the tulip. And I'm gonna do something weird and just unfold like one or two. Just so it gives it kind of like a I'll flip my of these up too, like I get these up. Like I want it to look very natural, you know. I'm going for a really natural look, you know. Very pristine and white and beautiful and all of that fun stuff. And also I'm gonna move one of these pieces of my casino more towards the front, just so we can see it a little better. Poke that one out a little more. Push this one out. All right. And lastly, we got our pop of color, which is this beautiful purple Lysianthus. Um, Lysianthus is gorgeous. It's very dainty and pretty, but just like how I usually do with um, ranunculus and flowers that are a little bit more delicate, I like to add it in last because it's so delicate and it breaks so easily. Um, so I like to add little pieces in very last, very last minute they're just so dainty and honestly I don't like cutting lisianthus unless I have a really sharp knife so I'm actually very nervous right now because they break so easily another thing with lisianthus is sometimes the buds come in really close so we can treat them just like roses and give them a good hold at the head and then go and then gently tease them open just a little just so we can see that beautiful center now for this one, I'm gonna have this one more facing the front just so we can see its beautiful color. The other cool thing about Lysianthus is that one stem comes with so many blooms on them. Sometimes it can be a little distracting, so I take off those distracting ones and 
Maybe I'll tuck them somewhere else, just a little accent, but I like to keep maybe only a few blooms on the actual like head of the flower, because it's just a lot, and they break off really easily anyways. Especially when doing like weddings and events, you're like moving stuff around a lot, and you tend to break during transportation. At least it's what I've learned a lot, so. One, I do these last, and two, I take off any extra stems, just so that it looks a little more neat too. That's another thing. Sometimes when there's too many things on one stem, it looks a little messy. So I like to take a couple of those off and then maybe use any leftover things like this for accents. And then also, I think I'm going to use a little bit more baby. A little more baby. This one I'm going to cut a little longer. Just so I can really get a good gesture going on. Now, if you're like, Madison, what if I wear this gesture? You said I wear it all the time. Um, it's flowers have movements to them, you know? So, like, this stem right here has a movement of this way. And this one has a movement of that way. This tulip kind of curves that way. So following the gestures of flowers and letting them speak for themselves is very important to me inside of Florence Street. Um, I don't know, it gives it that organic look. We just let flowers be how they're supposed to be. shapes them because when you reflex tulips again they look like a completely different flower which is really cool we have slight pops of our purple um lesianthus which i love lesianthus it's very dainty and pretty but again always make sure you're putting it in last because it breaks super easily and then we have fluffiness but still softness with our larkspur um so yeah this is this week's diy i hope you enjoyed it please send us pictures of what you make with this diy this week um, it always makes me happy when i get to see what you guys get to make and I will see you guys next week. All right? Have a good week and bye.